because there is a pre previous ruling about this. Uh, in that ruling, against changing this land to business highway, one of the reasons given by the council was the, was the effect a zone change will cause a tra on traffic in the area as a whole. This was one of the difficult um, problems that they uh, uh, questions that they were asking. Uh, now this was very, this was over 30 years now. So now one can simply assume that growth in population will have will have corresponding effect on the uh, traffic condition in the area. But so changing the business highway now will be even worse than that time because traffic uh, will be maybe twice, three times than it would have been at that time. Now, earlier time of the current, in the earlier meetings that we had, we, or the first meeting, we presented uh, a petition uh, signed by residents in the area against uh, the zone change. And this is important as it clearly shows how the residents feel about the change that the zone, change the zone will, will cause today. That if if this zone is changed, what the rules of concern around him and uh, do anything he wants to do there. You can even sell the, the place to somebody else who can be doing something that is not allowed. Now, because of our health, quality of life and uh, property loss that will occur, I think it will be wrong thing to change this to Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? proper zone where this business is operating? Is there any map showing if it's out of the right zone, in the right zone? I mean, there's been allegations thrown around here all night that there's cars parked where they shouldn't be. Is there anyone coming in with maps, plans, drawings, anything showing that something is out of position? You folks have been patiently listening to all of these neighbors say, Russo's got cars in the wrong place. Russo's doing this. There's no evidence that he's got junk cars. There's no evidence that he's got salvage vehicles. There's no evidence, despite all these stories that Mr. Maynard's given you about complaints in the past, no violations, no fines, no warnings, no anything about this business. You've got specters of all of these things that these neighbors are bringing up. We might lose our value. No expert to talk about that. 
there might be problems with well water. No experts are talking. We brought in an expert for the position that we wanted to put forth. This guy's had his business there for 40 years. No problems with the well water, excuse me, with the aquifer and the water there. Isn't that one of your best indications that this guy's running a good operation? The water's good. Everyone say it could get bad, it might get bad, something could happen. He's running a clean operation. If they're saying, he, oh, he could put in a different, we don't know what he's going to put in. He could put in any kind of business he wants. No, he can't. Business Highway allows specific types of businesses. And he would have to go to a site review. He would have to go to zoning if necessary. There's so many hurdles that he has to put forth before he can do anything out there. The neighbors can say to you, we don't know what he might do. He could do anything. He can't do anything. He's got to go through the steps. He's got to go through the process. So you're hearing about junk cars. No evidence. Salvage vehicles. No evidence. Problems property value. Property uh, values. No evidence. Proble problems with the uh, aquifer system. No evidence. You're hearing a lot of talk, a lot of speculation. I respect the neighbor's positions. I respect the fact that you've got to listen to it. But at some point, this, this is really going far afield, and you're listening to speculation, hypothesis, nothing concrete. Now, this is not a court of law. You don't need experts. The rules of evidence don't apply. I know all these things. But it's hard to sit by quietly while you just hear rank speculation, unsupported allegations, and impugning the man's business, his character, what he's doing, and what his plans are for the future. I don't know what these pictures are. Huh? If they're not showing junk vehicles or salvage vehicles, or there's some underlying evidence as to that they're not where they're supposed to be in terms of the zoning map, I don't think you should consider them. There's got to be some underpinning of facts. I just can't throw pictures at you. You've listened to a lot from these folks. I respect their concerns. I understand. But <clears throat> evidence is evidence, and while speculation and supposition and conclusions that aren't supported by anything, I think you should take that into account when you consider this whole application. Well, Mr. Todd, I think we, we will do that, but the fact of the matter is, is right now they're presenting their objections to this case. Nobody interrupted you when you presented your part of the case. I want to let them present their side of the case. We're accepting documents that they're presenting to us. We're giving you the option to have copies of them. I don't know what more we can do. We haven't made a decision yet. I understand. But we've given, we've given you the opportunity to present now we need to give them the opportunity to present without interruption. I, I, I appreciate that. We can listen to hours more, but I just think it's worth noting what you're listening to and take into account the quality of the evidence and the suppositions and the testimony that you're hearing. Take it for what it's worth. But we've been listening to a lot of things which are just unsupported by anything. And you're accepting it, and I understand that's what you do. But I just want to kind of bring it back to reality. You can listen to, I guess, all the witnesses you want all night, let them say anything they want. But there is the underpinnings to say these things that should be present in their presentation, not just to say things because they want to say them without any substantiation, without any support, without any, anything. But we can listen to more of them. Well, I think that's what we're getting when we get that's these fine. exhibits that we've been collecting, that's evidence sure. of that you have copies Evidence of, of what? You don't know what it is. You have to accept it as part of the public I don't care. think you have to accept it. I, don't, I think you have a decision to make before you simply blindly accept it. If they haven't shown you that these vehicles are where they're not supposed to be, or that they're junk, or that they're salvage, what are you taking it for? They just can't throw stuff up at you and say, here, look at this too, respectfully. You can do it if you want, but I want that for the record, for wherever this might go in the future. Is it our turn to uh, talk? Hang on, hang on, hang on. Mr. Dodd, I, I respect uh, you representing your company. Your I'm sorry, client. just a little loud for me, sir. Does it blow with that? Yeah. Oh, stop. Thank you. Mr. Dodd, I respect you representing your client. I must say that you take offense to saying that we have to listen to these folks. I want to listen to these folks. Sure. These are my friends. These are my. I've seen these people around town for 30 years now. When they tell me something's going on in their backyard, I believe them. It's that simple. 
Now, as far as submitting pictures, you're right. Maybe we can ask NSA to fly over satellite and take a picture for us. Yes. I, I get where you're going with all that. Your plans that you submitted, or excuse me, whomever submitted the plans for your applicant were in error. We accepted them. We had dialogue about it. If you recall, you had 15 points. There was only 14 numbers were off. Okay, so please, we accepted your plans. I'm accepting what the public's offering us to proceed. You can listen to it. You don't have to accept it to be true. If you choose to, that's up to you. Yeah, thank you. See your permission. Thanks. Anyone else?
commercial space is something that Mercedes Field needs. Um, also speaking as someone who would like to open her own engineering business in Morrison Field eventually someday. And I have a lot of friends in town that have a lot of other ideas. And that, that really is something that we want to see. Um, I absolutely can understand the residents' concern for the impact. But I think that there can be a way that both sides could be at peace. Um, there is commercial sewer, uh, there is sewer there, there isn't water. Um, as long as everything was done right, it shouldn't impact the water table, you should not see flooding. There could be flooding now, depending on what kind of earth moving is going on. Um, I noticed too, just driving by that lot for my entire life, it's very sandy. Um, I think that the material there, as long as it doesn't change as it goes down back, it, it should be pretty good for drainage. We should be able to do some good things here. So I just wanted to offer my opinion in that capacity, um, listening to both sides, going back and forth, having some professional experience, developing land both commercially and residentially. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else? This little lady way back has gotten up and down, up and down. Ben would probably have a lot to say. I don't know about you, but you've been going like this. Before. I'm just going to give you this a chance. It's just a matter. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I see it goes up. Antonio, would you be so kind as to provide Mr. Dodd with a copy of the map, please? I don't have any for him. I don't want to make his own map. Nothing more than that. Is that Mr. Dodd? Yeah. Why does the office have to have 
in this highway, in this highway, it's good for the community. I don't know if it's good for the community or an aquifer zone. If it wasn't an aquifer zone, maybe it'd have a different look at all of it. Well, anyway, we can get into the last people who started. We're going to go into the values between Georgiana Avenue and Baltimore and Sunnycrest Avenue. Approximately in that general area of the map, in a short distance, is about 165 houses. In total, 60, out of 165 houses, they had a basic average of 325,000 in value. And, and how we get that is the houses across from Davis, they average 325,000. One is 297. Another one is 384, so it comes up like this right here. 320, 358, and 297, these are the 325,000 dollar average. And now you can see that's all, see how dense all those houses are all around here? What we've done here is taken the average, which is consistent with the rest of the houses on Georgiana, vicinity, and across the highway, all Timber and Victory Highway. And you take that 165 houses and you multiply it by 325. You come out to somewhere near 53 million. And that's just, those are just values, town values, and it's all based on town values. Uh, and you, you took a, say, depending on what you put in there, if somebody took a potential loss of 5% in the overall value, you would come out to 2.6 million. So from the comp point of view, the fact that the houses are so close to each other, the house in the front of the site and the house behind the site, it lose much more than 5%. And consequently, the 